Bam, bam, ba, down. Theme song. Welcome back to Good Company. We're continuing on with our playthrough of this, relying heavily on the comments to keep me any good at this game. And we're gonna start. We're gonna keep going with the campaign. I've been playing the challenge levels a little bit and getting to know them. But I think the I think our playthrough has got to be about this campaign. I mean, I don't know if we'll ever make it that far, but this is this is a lot of fun. So we're gonna keep playing it. Uh, so in this one, are you excited for a lesson with your old man? Oh, I'm working with my dad. I'm working with my pops in this. So let's get started with level, uh, level th three or level rising markets. Hey kid, there you are. Check out this working production setup. Ready to jump r directly into the interesting stuff? Uh, yes. Let's take a look here. I I'm gonna pause for a second. Almost first, we need to look at uh, product markets. Okay, we're gonna look at product markets in a second. But like, what are we making? I want to know. I want to get to know the business. Also, I love this little setup here. This is a good strategy hint right here. Uh, tables right next to each other. They can both stand right there and access these corner shelves. So I'm gonna definitely be copying that, which is I assume why they're showing it to me. All right, Carrie. I guess you're right. You're more competent in that department. So I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Charlie. So up until now, you provided with complete blueprints, and we simply sold the finished products. Today, you'll set up some of your own designs. Yes! I can finally make the solidifier, which is a product I just came up with now. To do this successfully, you'll need an understanding of what kind of products the markets want. Let me give you a brief overview. Okay. All pro oh my goodness, this looks uh, complicated. Uh, same type, complete, compete in the same single market, even if they're being sold by the same company. Okay, fair enough. The market panel also contains a market discovery tree that allows you to unlock new markets and product types. Yeah, let's go there. A little heads up, this first will be more of a sightseeing tour. Oh, okay, fine. Sightseeing tour? I want to do stuff here. Uh, this might be a bit overwhelming at first, but don't worry. Once you've taken it, I like that the game knows. It's like, don't worry, this is intense. All right, the effort part is the market overview. That's very good. We've got uh, expected features, display fidelity, and battery life. So this is what... This is what people like are expecting in whatever it is that I'm going to make. It, I guess in general. And they don't want it to be too heavy. That makes sense. Based on this product, I guess, though, probably, right? The calculator product. This is what people expect. Okay. The lower part covers all products of the selected market. Uh, market details like prices, discount sales, and revenues are shown per product. Whoa. Specific electric. What have we made revenue-wise? Nothing. We haven't done anything yet. Okay, we got to get to it then. Okay, let, let's give it. Let's get to it. Okay, look here. This is the weekly demand for the selected product type. The maximum amount of calculators you could sell per week is twenty. Okay, okay, okay. So th at that point, I'll have s s sated the market. The market will be satiated. Don't worry. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say that word anymore. How about that? That's the new deal I'm making with you guys. Over here, you can see how many calculators you could potentially sell if there are no other calculators competing that week. Oh, oh heavens. Okay. Um, on the market. Sorry, I didn't say that week. I read, I made that up part up, including your own design. So, uh, potential sales next week, eight. But really, oh, so the weekly demand is 20, but the, really I could just only sell about eight. Right now, your potential sales are not that high. Okay. <laughs> That's because your product's market rating is relatively low. We suck. Every market has a weekly demand, which is a market's maximum sale capacity. Yeah, wait, I thought that's what that was. Or, okay, anyway. Uh, each product has a market rating, which is the sum of the price rating and the market appeal. Maximize your marketing market rating to sell as many units as possible. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, like, lower the price, basically. The potential sales of a product indicate how many units might be sold. Yeah, okay, I think you told me that already. <laughs> you can improve a product's market rating by setting a discount. Yeah, the cheaper the product is, the more customers will buy it. Go try and set it between 10 and 20%. I mean, here's the thing, though. Let's give them a 50%. Okay, so let's go like, yeah, 15. That's between 10 and 10. Oh, they're happy with me for doing that. So that's increased the market rating to 4.0, and I'm selling 14, but at a, I'm taking a loss. If I go to 10, what happens? 12, possible profit for unit. Total revenue, 1,200. If I go to 15, my total revenue changes to... I don't understand if they... It's not real. Okay, it's not really telling me how I'm... You know how many, how much more money I would make with my price modifier here. Thirty percent of market share. I kind of want more market share though, so I'm gonna keep it at fifteen. You always want to make a profit, so keep it on the price per unit. So, yeah, if I go, that's 120 gold per profit per unit. Which, like, I guess if I have to pay staff, does that take into account paying the staff? I don't even know if I have to pay the staff. 
But anyway, we're going to go with 15 so I can get more market share. I hope that that also creates more of a brand loyalty with uh, my other specific electric things. Like, hopefully there's some market. I think it might be per product. I don't, I don't think you can actually join, like, your whole product line together. So you can't have what's called a loss leader, I guess, to generate sales for your other stuff. To see your impact on markets, you need to sell a few products. I've prepared a little setup here. Okay, good, good, good. Sell 20 calculators and set the pallet to sell 12 calculators. Uh, okay, I'll do, I'll do that. So let's get out of here. Let's go to our pallet here. Now we have some sell orders here. Sell 100% uh, six calculatrons, but we actually want it to, we want to set the sell limit to 12, which fills out, yeah, so fill the entire pallet with calculatrons and then sell uh, 20 of them. Okay, I got that. What, what is it trying to ask me to do? I'm still kind of in tutorial mode, I think, with this game. So let's just get to know our product a little bit here. That's what I want to do, all right? So over here, we're making battery stacks. That needs chemicals and plastics. They are making LED arrays, which need electronic parts, and they both are making the same thing. Yeah, I kind of put them together. And these guys are making the cases, which require plastic. Now, what was I clicking on that was, like, showing me something red? Oh, that just shows, like, the shelving where all the input and output are going to. And I could... I think it's automated, but I could also uh, manually control that. But it looks like it's it's kind of doing its thing. It's like, it, it understands. Uh, you know, the nearest shelf is... I don't have to set that. And then these guys take all those parts and assemble the items. Now, where are they getting those parts from? Where's your input? Your input is from the pallet. So all that stuff, all the LED arrays, okay, the plastic case, then the original, okay, so all of the things are brought right back to here. So if I wanted to make my life easier, I could put a corner shelf right here where all those components just get collected here. However, is it really that useful? Not really. I think we'll just leave it as is. But I'm just saying if I wanted to free up some pallet spots, I could free up three pallet spots by building a shelf right there and having things go there. But again, the game is probably trying to teach me that this is how to do it. There we have it. We've sold our 20 uh, calculators. It's weird that one calculator takes up a whole space, like a whole pallet space. Like that entire box is just one calculator. I feel like we should maybe make them smaller. Now that you've sold a couple of calculators, I want to show you another important thing about markets. After selling a certain amount of units on the market, that market could be progressed to the next phase. Oh, sick. So 30, what is this? 30 like research points, I guess, will let us progress to the next phase, which increases weekly demand and raises the profit margin. But it adds another thing. They need to be smarter. After selling a certain amount of units on a market, that market may progress to the next phase. Uh, changes the market's demand. Higher market phases make the markets more challenging, but more profitable. You're also rewarded with discovery points when progressing a phase. Discovery points are used to unlock new markets. And if your product market is rating is good enough, progressing a phase is usually not a big issue. If your sales decrease, you can counteract that by setting a discount and often end up increasing your profit. But if the expected features increase too far beyond the features of your calculator, its market appeal will take a serious hit. And so, yeah, because that's it'll ask for that that next layer of expected features. Sell a certain number of products, and you can program them. Blah blah blah. Progressive market phase can give it discovery. Oh, this is like a re recap. I think. Uh, yeah, I gotta create improved products though. Okay, so let's progress to the next phase. Now we need to increase the processing power on our circuits and low power supplies. Yeah, we need to improve all this. So I'm going to design new products now. To keep up with the market, we want to introduce a new product that's a higher market appeal with the new design. We won't need a discount to sell more products. Yes, designing a product in a blueprint. Oh, I can't wait to get this blueprint going on. It's kind of like uh, um, Industries of Titan a little bit. Select a case that defines the basic layout. Product appearance, you can choose a color palette and form factor. Big fan. Only cosmetic. Okay, so that's just up to me. Add modules. Oh, this is like, isn't there, wasn't there a phone that came out a little while? Whatever happened to that phone that was like a modular phone? And then we all kind of were like, that seems cool. And then it just never came to market. I think it was like a terrible idea, maybe, from like an engineering standpoint. The modules you select here determine your product's features and manufacturer style, I guess. The feature, okay, let's do it. Let's got it. Take me to the blueprints. Blueprint designer. Oh, look at this. Create new, please. Please select a type for your product. Well, it's going to be a calculator. We have nothing else we can do there. I kind of want it in a wooden case, to be honest. And where do I get to rename it? I want to, I want to name this thing. 
Oh, oh look at this retro looking calculator. I love it. Okay, modules. So form factor, square tech. This doesn't change anything, big fan. I think I wanna go, I think I like this form factor better. Oh, sick, it's all 3D. I like the wooden case because it's a little more, which influenced the market appeal of the product. Oh, I see, hang on. So if you go plastic, on the left side, you can pick modules you wanna place. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, if you click on a module, you can see features that will add to the product when placed on the grid. The main features usually depend on the model module category. Currently, we have displays, lower power supplies, and circuits. If you hover over at a category symbol, you can see more information about each category. Uh, yep. Yeah. This position on the grid is invalid. You can also rotate it using the mouse wheel and the R key. Removed by selecting the current module. And then picking up the... Okay, okay, great. But I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. We went back to plastic case. I'm not sure what it did drawback-wise. I guess it didn't really do anything. Feature market appeal minus 1.2, but that's because we haven't started it yet. Hang on, style. Oh, let's, okay, let's go with the wooden case because it offers, it adds a little style points. Okay, sir, can you? So wait, blueprint designer. Okay, now we go to appearance. Good. Summed up green. Uh, honestly, I don't know why, but this one here is giving me the show severance vibes. So we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna go to modules. And now it's gonna try to tell me what it was trying to tell me earlier. Circuits, so we have displays circuits and low power supplies now battery stack for sure simple circuit is all we can do and it wants me to do an led matrix instead of an led array display fidelity is higher by it's, it's twice as high good data yield i guess i don't know okay let's do an led matrix then okay sick 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 okay wait how do i pick a different Oh, this is the name. How do I pick a different uh, module, you know what I mean, uh, sh uh, situation? What if I want a different design shape in here? Can I do that? I can't really change that. Okay, that's fine. Let's go LED matrix. And that's going to give me... So what if I just go, like, nuts with it? That's, that's huge, you know, whatever. Okay, so let's remove that. Let's go to simple circuit. I believe I need a simple circuit in here. Let's rotate it. Get a battery stack in here, which kind of goes there. Before you finish the product, let me explain a few things in the panel. Well, I'm not done yet, sir. I want to get an, a double battery pack in there. I want good battery life. Look at that, 2.0 for battery life. So we've maxed that out. It's heavy though, isn't it? 1.1 of three. I don't know, let's do, uh, okay, hang on. 204 possible profits per unit are 200. So for an extra four bucks, we're getting a better product, which I think it's heavy. Yes, but I think it's going to give me more things. Okay, let's explain a few things. Expected features increase the price and the market appeal of a product. So I'm talking about features with a question. Uh, the checkmark symbol are mandatory. Okay, and they must be greater than zero. Otherwise, you won't be able to finish the blueprint. There are other also drawbacks that can have negative impact. Yeah, the weight. We, we knew this. Products with a negative market appeal. I mean, look at that market appeal. I guess his market appeal is already maxed out, right? So maybe we don't need that. Because it's already maxed out. If I take this away, yeah, then the market appeal drops to nothing. So let's keep it at that, because it'll be five and it'll be not as heavy. Oh, I really want that double battery, but it's gonna cost me when I go to make it, won't I? The feature value market bar shows some of all your blueprints. Uh, if your product has a market appeal of five, you can sell the maximum amount per week, which is the weekly demand without applying discounts. We love it. You know, the, pro the highest market appeal doesn't always yield the highest profit. The sell price consists. Okay, very good. Now, wait, hang on. I wanna like, okay, this is the this is the recap. Yeah, fulfill all the expected features. Okay, don't take me away yet. Gotta rename this thing. The carrot abacus light. No, this is gonna be the counts, the countsman's apprentice. <laughs> I don't, I don't, guys, I don't know. It's called the countsman apprentice. Cause then I think you're just like, hey, do you have a countsman, bro? Cause like that's what I wanted to become a household name. So it's like, hey, can you pass me that countsman? All right, you can finish the calculator. The countsman's apprentice. Because we're also gonna have the countsman's pro. We're gonna have the countsman's master level. We're gonna have all the different like countsmen basically. Once we get into yeah, the calculatron. Now we have the countsman's apprentice. Perfect. Now that we have uh, the blueprint ready, we can shake up our production line. 
Uh, but for that, we'll need a few more calculators to be sold. I recommend switching the product to your new calculator. I recommend that as well. So let's do that. Hang on now. I would like you to make the Countsman's Apprentice. Countsman's Apprentice. Switch immediately to the Countsman's Apprentice. Now, we need wooden cases. So you fools, or you one single fool, you've switched to this, which means we need to go here. We need to get rid of... Uh -oh. Let's get rid of one of these cell orders here. And let's add a rule for some wood. Ah, see, then we bring the cases back here. We whoops, whoops, whoops. Oh dear, I think I just deleted all those cases. I, I wanted to sell those things. Let's sell them. Great. Okay, that's gonna sell them. Then we have we have a buy order for our plastic. We'll sell the plastic cases because these guys, these bad boys need wooden cases. Now they need LED matrix, simple circuit, and battery stack. You two are making battery stacks. Good. You two are making LED arrays. But what we want is an LED matrix. And that needs some circuit boards, baby. So that means we also need to buy some circuit boards, I think. Because that looked like a basic thing. Yeah, circuit board. So let's buy the... Only base material. Okay, yeah, okay, all right. So that means somebody else has to make circuit boards. What are you making? What were you making a second ago? You were making... Oh, you were also making the cases. So we probably need you on wooden cases. But what we need somebody to do is make circuit boards. Advance the calculator market to phase three. Sell 30 calculators. Set up all the production modules required for the new calculator. Why is that optional? <laughs> that shouldn't be optional. What, I, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to sell these bad boys. So let's um, minus our sell orders here and add a rule for my... Where are they? The Councilman's Apprentices. <laughs> sell order. Yes, please sell them. Okay, there we go. Reserve for simple circuit. So we need to set up another table. And I think it's going to be pretty intense, this table. So let's go for... How much money do I have? Oh, I'm loaded. <laughs> All right, let's go for our tinker table. And we're going like, to match this design style. I love this design style. So we're going to go here. Okay, stop rotating so much. We're going to go corner shelf. And I'm going to let it kind of automatically sort itself out. But what we needed to do is make circuit boards. And the circuit boards are made and brought over to here. They need two circuit boards. Okay, to make the LED array. Let's hire some suckers to do this. There we are. Now, what do these circuit boards need? They need plastic and metal. So we're already ordering plastic and we're not ordering metal. So what we need to do is let's remove cell uh, order. Have we sold them all already? I'll let that kind of clean itself out. Let's lower this so we can get out of rule and bring in some metal. There we go. Okay, so we're bringing in some metal. So that'll get brought to this shelf, I think. Yeah, kind of automatically, so we don't have to super worry about that. They now have everything they need, I think. We're still buying uh, plastic, and we're still buying metal. Sell order. I think we're good now. I don't think we have any plastic cases left, so we can get rid of that. We can increase our Craftsman's Apprentice situation. Now, this is reserving. So LED matrixes are brought here and simple circuits are being brought here. Okay, let's lower our calculators as we continue to sell them out. We're not making them anymore. There we are. Okay, what's this? This is missing LED materials. So, so what are you making? Wait, are you guys these tinkerers? I'm not sure what they're waiting for. <laughs> they might need a shelf or something, I think. I think maybe they need a shelf at this point. Battery stack. Because is there no room for battery stacks in here? Okay, well, what if we go logistics only? What, what can we get rid of? Let's get rid of the last few calculatrons. I think the sale just happened. Yeah, so let's delete that. And let's make sure... Hopefully another battery stack can get held there. I think they picked up some battery stacks, but they're waiting for LED matrix, simple circuit, and wooden cases. Wooden cases are coming along somewhat slowly here. 
just gotta wait for these wooden cases, I think. And then what are you making? You have... Target inventory is full. So you're trying to take those somewhere. All right, add a rule. Let's let another battery stack pile up here. All right, it's functioning now. It took a little while. I basically realized that I had forgotten to get simple circuits up and running. So once those got started, they had to get a back stock of like 12 units here before a logistics officer came by and grabbed the surplus. Now, everything is running, if a little messy. I think I might want to spend some money on another shipping pallet, perhaps courier pallet here. So why don't we make this one our ad rule. Let's make this one our Councilman's Apprentice uh, cell box here. And then we can actually remove a bunch of Councilman's Apprentices from here. Let's get rid of the Councilman's... Well, here's the one thing though. Councilman's Apprentices being placed here is really accessible for these guys. So maybe what I gotta do is... Uh-oh. Uh yeah, let's lower these. What if we eventually ship over all of this like raw material production uh, over to here because I think that'll be a little easier. So let's get wood going on here. Let's get electronic parts, plastic and metal, chemicals, and uh, circuit boards. Well, no, that's all just the purchases that we want to do. And then the rest can just be logistics here. I just kind of want to clean this up, really. So I'm going to go here into our Councilman's Apprentice and make sure, yeah, we actually kind of want all of that, or because then these guys just, as soon as they finish them, boom, they just walk right over here and fill it up with Councilman's Apprentices. Now what I want to do is, like, stop these, I guess, so that they only are gotten from here. So I think what I can do, actually, there is delete that buy order, delete these buy orders. They'll stay in stock and eventually just get used up. Let's get rid of that wood, too. Uh, we don't have a buy order for that anymore. So the buy orders are here now. That's good. And eventually those will free up and get taken out of our stock. It kind of cleans things up a little bit. But if not, okay, things are a little messy. But I also got another staff member to be walking around. So we got two of these little uh, employees running around. Hopefully that's good. I don't know if I'm... I don't know if I'm making enough money to have this many staff. That's always my question. But it do, does seem like we've gotten on top of things for the most part. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, we want to sell those. So in a few seconds here, we're going to see how much money we made. Hopefully we made a decent amount of money because we're about to spend more on the product. Uh, well, eh. Uh, did we make money? <laughs> it, doesn't, it certainly doesn't look like it. But I at least sold some calculators. Now, I want to get to the next phase of the market. 25 of 30 units sold. Price discount on the Councilman's Apprentice. Zero price discount. Yeah, because we have market rating, potential sales, 21. Good. Total units sold six. We've sold 49 of these bad boys. So pretty soon we'll be able to progress to phase three, which will probably require the design of a new calculator or a computer or I don't know what, a VR headset, whatever next. Another interesting thing I've noticed is that if you end up with... Uh, I actually remove that sell order now. If you end up with all this extra stuff, I was just basically trying to clean up my production orders. You have all this here. I'm going to right-click, and it throws it down into this little, like... I'm not even sure what this is. Manual logistics that I could have. This is this can be product I have that I've paid for that is, like, standing by so I can use it whenever I need it. Uh, that's pretty cool. I quite like that. Let's just make sure I'm not missing anything. I think I'm missing... Uh, what am I missing? Circuit boards I have to make. Plastic and metal. Plastic and metal. Chemicals, wood, and electronic parts. I think I've got it all. Okay, good. I'm ordering all the basic supplies that I need. And then what I can do is move here. Oh, yeah, great. Let's get rid of that sell order of these. Let's take this guy. Click over here and move it to here. Uh, increase my sell order there. Oh, what did, I don't know, what was it trying to show me there? Okay, now, I've, yeah, things have been gotten a little messy. I think the original idea was that some of the core components, the final components, are also stored here. But that's become a bit of an issue, as you can see here. We have still some folks... My timing is off. I don't need two tables for each item. So my timing has become off, and now there's nowhere to store these things. I think what I might do to mitigate that is, like, let's create a shelf. Uh, wait a minute. Plant decor? Sick. Okay, I got distracted. Office decor? Ah, oh, sick. Okay, well, we don't need that. Uh, wall decor? Oh, I've got a CEO painting here. Whatever this guy's wall. <laughs> you can look at that guy all day. Okay, I got a little distracted. I got distracted. Back to work, back to work. Uh, do we have a small... Can we do a small shelf? We could do a small shelf right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a rule. And I would like the battery stacks brought here. I would like simple circuits. 
Uh, LED matrixes and wooden cases. What else? What else do we need for these bad boys? LED matrix, symbol circuit, battery stack, and a box. Okay. I love it. We did it. Okay, great. So I would like all those items brought here, and then I want you guys to get your input. We can change your input over to there, but eventually I think it'll auto change once you guys realize that that's where the stuff is. So now that hopefully this means, okay, wait, yeah, this place is full, I guess. Hopefully what this means is there's gonna be somewhere else for people to bring stuff in a second. So yeah, load, load me up here, please, logistics people. We'll see if that gets done in a little while. I'm gonna speed up time. I think maybe because I haven't assigned it as the input though. Oh, nice big sale was made, good, good. Oh yeah, we're making money, we're making money. We've sold, we did the 30 calculators, so we have already achieved it, but now I'm just kind of getting bogged down in the like, trying to make this work here. <laughs> we got target inventory full, I mean, it's not that bad. We have one, two people, the people making LED matrixes. So these are made too fast. That's what I'm getting, that's what I'm hearing. But I want them brought here. Why aren't they being brought here? Oh, they're back to work. My maintenance guys are doing the best they can. Simple circuits, LED maintenance. Yeah, so they fill up these spots here. Now, are they being told to do that specifically, or can I not also... Okay, what if we do this? Input. New input. Right here. Same thing here. Trash. New input. Right there. Speed up time. This could cause... A... Okay, there we go. So now they're being loaded up. I mean, come on. That's awesome, though. Okay, good. Okay, so now they're gonna go to that shelf, then to drop things off here. Oh, it's a nice little circle. All right, that's giving people a little bit more space, but it looks like maybe the LED matrixes. So the, okay, crafting duration, oh, too many panels. The crafting duration is one per day. This is, oh, for heaven's sake, <laughs> close all these. That's also one per day. Everything's on a one-to-one -one basis. So really, you just have to kind of start it at the same time. Because what it looks like we have... Okay, they're all one per day. So what it looks like we have is we just don't have a balance. We have all this extra crap. But I don't think I can sell them just to kind of balance things out. So I'll always have a little bit of float here. And then I could, if, you know, worst case scenario, I could just take these out. Just right-click them out. Like so. And then make this thing all sell orders. Which, I mean, that's silly because it'll never be filled. But this is all my basics here. And we've got this, like, back stock over here. I could probably load them up into this thing. What if I do that? Boom. Here's 20 cases for you guys to have. Here's some more. Oh, I can fill up the stacks too. Oh, that's sick. Okay, sweet. We'll do that. We're going to go. We'll fill these up. Make sure that's done. got 20 in there. 22 simple circuits. <laughs> done. 30. Okay, really? So basically, I think we actually could have two more of these putting out even more work. But things are about to change because I'm about to advance the calculator market to phase three. So let's get and do that and see what happens next. Phase three. Okay, what does it do? Weekly demand. Uh, ups the weekly demand. The base price goes up. And my requirements for battery life go up as well. So I'm going to have to redesign this sucker. Total revenue. Oh, yeah, I'm making money hand over fist. I mean, it doesn't look... Yeah, I don't think I'm making money hand over fist, but I'm doing okay. Progressing to the next phase. Seems like you're doing fine. Should have finally enough discovery points to unlock a new market. How much you can expand and produce is strictly limited by the markets. The very first products it will yield only small profits and limit your company growth. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. The new market can be unlocked if you if two conditions are met. Do you have enough discovery points? And at least one of the predecessor markets has been unlocked. New unlock markets are available immediately. Oh my goodness. Let's discover a new market. I'm nervous. Wait, do we not like market rating? So if I offer a discount on that, I don't really want to offer a discount, but like, what if we just do like a 5% discount? Oh, I want to keep my market share up even though the battery life isn't as good. Let's do that. Oh, we're already making moves. Okay, discover a new market. Okay. For now, there are only three markets. Well, wow. <laughs> but later you'll, okay, unlock the cassette player. What if I wanted to, ah, oh, okay, fine. Sick. Once you unlock a new market, you'll naturally want to design a product for it. I've given you some plans for new modules. The cassette player's mandatory features are battery life and sound quality. Feature-wise, you shouldn't aim too low. The market appeal should be high enough. Yeah, let's make a premium product. That way you don't have to update your product. Yeah, let's, let's do, yeah, I agree with dad. Man, I, I love my, I love my dad. You also over... It doesn't look like my dad, though. This guy looks different. My dad uh, my dad and me 
uh, do not have... We're not blessed in this kind of hair department. Like, look how much hair that guy has in his, I assume, say, 70s? You can also overachieve features from the expected features list. They will still add up if the sell price until their yellow bar is filled up. Okay. Is that a cassette player with at least a 3.5? 3.5? Get out of here, dude. All right. Let's make a new product here uh, in the blueprint area. Okay. We're going to make a create new cassette player. Now... Like I'm going. I'm going wooden case because we're gonna have this. Set, we've already have the kind of like the setup for wooden cases, although they're fragile. Uh, what is this? Features, noise pollution and weight. Ecological footprint is great, so they ha they like that weight style. I, I'm not seeing. Yeah, the fragility can be modified with small cases, small chassis, medium cases, simple reinforcement. Okay. Well, we'll try to do something like that. We'll see what, what our options are. Okay, what do we like? I'm trying to think, like, which one is the most like one I used to have? Honestly, I think it's kind of the Groove Kid. The Groove Kid looks sick. Now, this looks classic, though, but I want to do the Groove Kid. Hard ex hard Player Extreme. Don't worry, we're going to rename that. Stereo Dream. Oh, sick. It's either this one. It's either this one or this one. I'm going with this one. Look at this bad boy. This one looks a little more like one I used to have. The one I used to have was actually more yellow, but I, I kind of want a blue jazz. Drawbacks are ecological foot... Wait a minute. Hang on a minute. Wait, a wooden case is bad? It gives me style points? I thought a wooden case was bad. Hang on. I see. It also changes the shape. Let's go... Let's go plastic case and see what happens. Fragility is now at zero, so that's not bad. Weight is good. Noise pollution. <sighs> Darn, I think we gotta go plastic. I think we're going plastic on this one. And we're going Groove Kid version. Hard Player Extreme. Okay, uh, all right, uh, what should we call this one? This one is gonna be called uh, the Ear Blaster um, 6000. This is the Ear Blaster 6000. All right, we got to get some beepers, monophone speakers in there. We got to get an LED display fidelity. Well, do they care about... Yeah, they don't care about display fidelity, so I bet we could do a small LED array. What, uh, what do they care about? Battery life and sound quality. Okay, what are my sound options here? We got this one, the beeper. Or the more fragile and harder to make monophone speaker. But I bet the sound quality is real nice. I'm going sound quality, baby. Like so. That's what I'm talking about. Get that to a two. Feature value, 1.5. It needs to be a 3.5. This thing's gonna be expensive, I think. Let's go LED array. Yep, simple circuit. We're gonna need a simple circuit in this bad boy. And what do we have? Enhanced battery cell. Ooh, sick. Or battery stock, which we're already kind of making, is the thing. Okay, let's take a look here. This is way better battery life. Way better battery life, and then we don't need to get plastic parts. Yeah, I want to go... Although, you know, an enhanced battery, you know, it could be good to have that. Uh, ecological footprint is not ideal. Let's take a look here. Feature value 2.5, market appeal 4.2. Good good pro uh, profit per unit, though. It's heavy, it's fragile, but it's not hitting its max. I'm seeing a lot of drawbacks here. Noise pollution and heat loss. All these things, I guess, yeah, we don't have the ability to mitigate just yet. Uh, so let's go for another... How can we get another one of those bad boys in here? Like this... Let's go here and get the battery here. So there's like two speakers, you know what I mean? Let's go for our monophone speaker right here. Shoot, it's too fragile. 2.6. We gotta get a market appeal of 3.5. Uh-oh. <laughs> Can I get more module space? <laughs> All right, uh, simple circuit is maybe my problem here. Uh, let's take a look at our circuit options. LED array, no, that's not a circuit option. I need a simple circuit. Or do I? Hang on, does it not need a simple circuit? Because then can we just do this and just blast you in the face with speakers? <laughs> oh, no, people hate this product. 
Market appeal. Oh, I, I'm looking at feature value. I was looking at the wrong uh, friggin' thing. Okay, hang on. Let's go back to the beeper here. Our market appeal is five. I was looking at the wrong number. Oh, that's what an idiot sounds like. Now, do we have enough battery life? Yes, but we could feature proof it with like another battery stock. See what it does here. It really didn't make it more fragile. It's going to last way longer and the sound is better. So this is going to actually last if we push it forward and have the Ear Blaster 6000, uh, you know, increase its market value. So wait, the feature market appeal is already maxed out. So we're good. Finish it with design. Now, this is going to be a lot to make, though. Oh, boy. Hey, Charlie, I just got a call that I'm needed elsewhere. Can you look? I sure can do. Oh, no, it's just me and dad now. Very well. To earn the first trophy, you simply need to sell 15 cassette players per week. I'll be on my way. Okay. Time to set up your production line. Yeah, we're going to need a production line for this bad boy. And I think, does it say how long it's, somewhere it says how long it's going to take to make it. 1.8 days. So we can make one every 1.8 days. So basically we need all that stuff that takes one day to make. We need two of those. No, we need half. We need half of its production to make one of these. So we need two desks for every one of these. Now how much does the, this is also a 1.8. So this is the thing. I think we could... This could feed another desk at least. Uh, for making these cassette players. And we've got those being sold. Let's set this up over here. Courier pallet. Because these are expensive. So let's make sure we get this bad boy. Add a rule. Ear blaster 6000s. Hang on, hang on. Let's grab our C key and move it. So we can kind of just mirror this setup. One, two, three, four. Uh, so we want one over. Oh, it's a, oh yeah, it's a slightly different design, right? Okay. So we're gonna put our two desks here and set up basically a mimicking production line only with probably fewer desks. If all of these are made in, if these are all made in one and it takes 1.8. Yeah, we need two of these for every one desk, I think, a pro almost. All right, let's get going here and set up our uh, assembly table. I'm gonna pause the game here and kind of just copy this design because I quite like it. But we're gonna give you guys a shelf. I feel like that's gonna make our lives easier. Yeah, so we're gonna go shelf here, add a rule. Okay, wait, 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 what do I need? You guys are making Ear Blaster 6000s. And to do such a task, what you need are, oh, it's already been done. You're going to need, hang on, all these items. Beeper, microphone speaker, and a plastic case. So we're going to go plastic case. Okay, add a rule. Okay, get rid of the... Create it automatically. Well, I want to get rid of it automatically. I don't know how I feel. Why did you make this automatic? Declare source. Logistic employees will pick up items. Oh, declare sync. Okay, very cool. Okay, so they're already loading it. Okay, hang on now. Now everybody relax. Just relax. Let's get these tables set up. I'm gonna go Tinker Table right here. Tinker Table, Soldier Spy. And I've done this backwards, I believe, so we're gonna hit the C key and flip that around. There we are. Then we're gonna get a place mode. We're gonna get a little corner shelf right here. And y'all's job are going to be my beepers. And you're gonna be my monophone speakers. Now, what do you need for that? Screws? Metal, sun metal sundries. Who's making metal sundries? I think we import those. Screen and coils. Let's go here, add a rule. They're green, so I think we have to make them. Okay, that's no good. So uh, we needed to set up another production line. Oh, this area's getting a little busy, isn't it? Put that in the way. Oh, yo, check it out. Heck yeah. All right, then we're gonna go shelf right here. Things are about to get pretty messy in here. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna, okay, this needs to make our metal sundries and it needs to make our, I wanna say coils. Oh, metal processing machine really speeds it up. Oh, I can't wait till we get to that stuff. Okay, so if you make metal coils and the sundries and you need metal rods, oh no. I think we have to make rods. And that needs metal, oh no. Okay, so you're gonna make the rods, you're gonna make the metal sundries. So that means, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, I said to myself. Let's hire some people for that and get that line running. Then these guys are gonna need 
coils, metal sundries, and plastic. Plastic, we're gonna set a rule here to order up some plastic. Wait, hang on, let's set up the rule first. There, and then put that plastic that we had in storage. Add another rule, metal. Set that metal up that we had in storage. Good. All right, what else do we need here? The ear blaster needs plastic cases as well as beepers. Monophone speakers, so you're making the monophone speakers, you're making the beeper. Okay, so we need coils, oh boy. <laughs> My brain is breaking. And my brain is broken. Yeah, this this setup didn't last very long, did it? Okay, but if we do something like this, is this crazy of us? Why, no, it's not. Oh, this is weird, though. This is starting to get real weird. All right, so these two here, you guys, your guys' is a job. I'm going to get you doing plastic cases, and I want you doing... Uh, what is the piece that we're missing? Uh, we are missing battery stack, so you're going to do battery stack. For that, you need plastic and chemicals. And if you're doing cases, you need plastic. So that's great there. Um, we still don't have coil setup going on. So that's just a pretty base creation thing. So let's get beepers here. Back there. Okay, so we need a coil table, right? Let's put a coil table right here. This got real messy. Or right here. Just kind of stuff them in the corner there. No, because I think we could do like a line up here. I think we might want to do that, like get another table here. But once we find out what it is that uh, that we need from them. Uh, and we could also do, yeah, we'll probably give them their own shelf or something like that. All right, so this is the coil person. They need metal and uh, okay, let's get that person hired. Okay. You need rods to be delivered. This person, uh, Lewis, is making for metal, uh, waiting for metal so we can get that going. Once I see this base level stuff, then we'll move on to our uh, our beepers and our tweeters. Then we'll get our staff to come and do this part. So you're waiting for battery stacks. We, we don't need these. I forgot. Wait, wait, do we need battery stacks? Yeah, we do. Of course, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot that I forgot. Whew. Okay, I think we did it. I don't know what the coils are doing here. And I can't automatically get rid of it, which is kind of annoying. But I think that means it'll also automatically fix it in a second here. All right. Once you guys have made your first round of metal sundries, I'm going to get all oh, the coils. We need a lot of coils. We need two coil desks, I think. I reevaluated the target parameters, and I noticed that you only need to sell 15 cassette players for a week once. Oh, that's well, that's nice of you. Because again, we're I think we're still making money, right? Over here. We're still selling these bad boys. So let's not sell... There. Ear blaster. What does it say here? Missing demand. Yeah, I'm not done yet. Just wait. We're not going to sell them. We're going to sell them all in one blast. I think I need more coils being produced here, though. I need another coil desk. There, let's go coil desk here, Tinker Table. And unfortunately, they kind of get... Because, like, I could have done with a different shelf there, but let's just... Yeah, let's just give them... They just get their own shelf, which is sort of a waste of space and time, but that's okay. And you know what we need? A little monster... Monstera plant there. We can get another desk right here. Without its own counter, though. I'm not sure what it's going to do. Uh, I have three assembly tables producing... I have to do three of these?! <laughs> I, okay, fine. You know what? I am going to make a third one. It's going to be back here, though. I should have looked at that first. All right, and I'm going to get you a corner shelf. And I think everybody can still get around. Ear blaster. There we are. So we're going to have three. There we go. Do not stop the calculator production. Oh, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I did that already. All right. Do we have any coils starting to build up? We've got 20 coils. Let's hire these guys. And set that in in motion. Now this is they're gonna generate. They're not generating it enough to supply both of these. So the third one is definitely not enough with this current setup. But I mean, I don't know. Can I buy more space? Probably later. But right now, this is the current setup. If I try to get another desk in here uh, or two, it's gonna start causing some major problemos. I could jam one more desk right here so we'll try to see what like what they're basically what they're constantly getting low on that's what i'll try to fix 
But I'm going to wait until we see some... So we've got one monophone speaker here and one beeper. I want to see two and two. That's what I want to see. Now, where are you guys getting your... Okay, that, yeah, so we need plastic cases here too. Okay, good. Those are reserved. We've got a battery stack of 20 already building up. Maybe this battery stack person we don't need. I actually haven't even hired the case person yet either. That's okay. No, it's not. We need cases being made. You're hired. And over here, we have an issue with toggle inventory. Oh, wait. Oh, because plastic cases, right? We didn't, never had anybody making plastic cases, which means we're ordering enough plastic. We're fine. So maybe I switch one of you guys over to uh, plastic cases as well for now. Sorry, dude. I'll let you guys sort yourself out. This has become a problem here. So we have a backup of supply, and I think it's because we actually could support a third calculator uh, creator. I mean, d dare we? Let's see if I'm right. And if I'm right, you guys all owe me a uh, free car, a Tesla. Okay, so let's get this corner shelf set up here. And I'm gonna go input there. I'm gonna go output there. It's a bit of a long run for you, but like, yeah, this is the new plan here. We've got one case, we got two. Let's get our, let's get our production line going here. We're gonna, about to run our first Ear Blaster 6000. So what I found is sometimes the, uh, the, the people get a little bit uh, confused here. So we've got two Ear Blaster 6000s here. If I change the output all the way down here, which is, yes, a bit annoying, they automatically, okay, well, this guy is automatically bringing it. But what I found is these two would not unload their boxes because this shelf still had some output in it. So I'm going to actually take these, clear these out. I think if you right click, it automatically sends it to your local inventory. Click on this and right click these bad boys. So now we're stuffing up in here. What do we have? We have, we almost have 15 units ready to sell right away. I might even, I'm gonna click sell order on because within two minutes, this is gonna be stacked and all of our uh, cassette six, ear blaster 6000s uh, uh, assemblers are gonna be standing here waiting. Now across the production line, everything seems to be running fairly smoothly. Uh, I have switched over one of my uh, advanced circuit board people over to making plastic cases and looks like our wooden boxes are full so yeah occasionally there are backups over here uh in our i mean where are they putting those why are they standing there what do we have here we have we could just do that it expand yeah there we go so that kind of creates more rules there on their local shelf so they'll be able to fill those up but yeah we are not moving through our wooden cases fast enough even though we have 1.8, like these people are making them as fast as they can, looking for these cardboard wooden or wooden boxes. And they are simply just not, uh, I guess meeting the demand of two shelves. Well, hey, that's good to know. Looks like, if I slow down time here, it looks like, what was it trying to tell me? My drawbacks are good, my Ear Blaster 6000, no, uh, you know, draw, you know, no discounts because this is a premium market. Market rating five. Um, I don't know what it was trying to tell me, but it seems like everything's going okay. Oh, I can progress in my calculator phase. I don't know if I want to do that though, because my market appeal is going to go way down if I do that, I think. Base price goes up though, but it's going to become more challenging. Ugh, processing power. I'll just do it. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to give a bigger discount because right now we're making really good profit on the units. So let's, 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 yeah, let's keep people interested. And we're only going to make 173. What were we making before? Like 202 or something. That's fine. I'll, I'll keep... We'll go down to like 195. So we'll give a 15% discount to keep... Uh, market appeal is really low though, isn't it? Uh, well, that's fine. The market appeal is just the base rate. So let's stick at 15, which is a nice 4.0 market rating. And uh, keep selling. Hopefully, we, hopefully that didn't screw up our profits. We're about to sell, okay, we're about to sell a bunch of these bad boys, hopefully all of them, and we're about to sell all of our cassettes, which will free up some room here. Let's unpause. Bang! There it is, folks. CEO TV with breaking news. <laughs> Buckle up. A company oh, is gaining momentum. my goodness. Worth keeping an eye on them. Um, unlock the pocket computer. So many products make a steady profit out of them. Earn uh, 10,000 doubloons per week. Okay, so I didn't actually get my three uh, medals. That's a shame. So I think what I need to do is go back and continue playing. <laughs> I love waiting. Oh, that's amazing.
Okay, uh, unlock the pocket computer market. I think I could probably do that. And then this was like, okay. Oh, wait, hang on. There's a bit more going on here. Monsieur Vaillant that wants to talk to me. Just our luck. They do say a bad penny has a habit of turning up again. So, hi, Mr. Vaillant. Charles Wassel Bitter, you know I have nothing about the utmost respect for you. I'm just curious what your family are up to after another associate's turned down all of my affairs. Can't blame him for that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, anyways, I congratulate you. If you keep it up like this, I might find myself a worthy at being hand. All right, that's enough of this guy. I'm just here to maintain a standard, to cultivate competence, if you will. Blah, blah, blah. Prove to me that you're more than a successor of a defeated man. You know how markets and designs work. Unlock the pocket computer. I was just about to. You know he's not a bad guy. I'm just a bit sour because I miss the old days. Fayant knows what he's doing. I've prepared a checklist for you. Earn discovery points to unlock the pocket computer market. All right, so this is coming up next. This is what I need to do next to wrap this bad boy up. Um, discover new market, 150 requirements, 150 points. I only have 40 plus 60 if I can get to that. And if I can upgrade my calculator market, I get another 30. So this plus 60 will get me to 100. Interesting. Okay, so I need to go up two more phases probably. In my At least one more in my cassette player and then one or two in my computer. Um, sorry, in my cassette player. Yeah, one or two in my cassette player or at least another one or two in the calculator. Two in the calculator, one in the cassette player. That's what we got to do. Uh, I don't know if that's possible though. Affecting drawbacks, They're, these seem to be kind of changing a little bit. I gotta keep an eye on this and make sure that we continue to improve our products, but I am starting to get a real good handle of this thing. Financial overview. Uh, where do I see my... Okay, net worth, growth 17. I wanna see what my total revenue. Last 30 days, 50,000 doubloons. Profit, 37,000 doubloons. I think I'm making enough. Wasn't I supposed to make 10,000 a week? All right, we're going to keep an eye on that, but I think I'm doing good in that uh, phase there. What's it trying to tell me here? It was trying to tell me something. All right. Well, uh, basically, I think if I keep pushing this and I keep improving my products, I'll be able to stay competitive, offer a few discounts here and there. What is this person waiting to drop off? They have some coils that can't be dropped off anywhere. Why not? Here. There we are. Oh, I see, because this shelf isn't being used for some reason. Okay, well, that's fine. So we have, we're have we making a lot of coils here. Probably because these guys, the coils must be... We're making them a little too fast, I guess. Even though they both need constant coils. We're still just like producing way too many coils. Okay, well that's fine. That, that leads me to believe I can push a little harder in my production. But I, as long as I keep this going, I should be able to make that 10,000 uh, doubloons a week uh, uh, profit. And I should be able to get market phase five and three on my cassette players, which unlocks the pocket computer market. So I hope you found this one to be some absolutely, truly solid content. I am looking forward to continuing this campaign. We'll easily be able to get the three uh, awards on this one and then move on to find out what is in store for us in the next episode. But hopefully you liked it. And if not, uh, give me a like and a subscribe anyway. And go watch another one of my beautiful videos. Because we will see you in the next video of whatever it is that we decide to play. Oh, and here I am, by the way. I've just been working on circuit boards for weeks now. I've just been doing that. Good work for you, Gibson's Tart. Keep 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 the job up. Show those workers that you're you're not a, you're not a, a, a you know opposed to rolling up your sleeves. <laughs> God. This this game is awesome.